Right, welcome to MBTV. We're live this week from Padstow down in Cornwall. Well, I've got a little story for you. This one's not about Rick Stein, although there's an interesting little insight that will sort of introduce this clip. Because if you look here, just behind me, you'll see this is the queue at 7.30 on a Monday night for Stein's Fish and Chips. Okay, just look at it. It's like a football match is going on. Humongous queue. Let's go and look at what's happening in the rest of town. So it's a Monday evening in August, and the town is absolutely rammed. You can see we've got buskers, we've got ice cream vans, all sorts going on. Come look around here. The cafes are full, people are eating al fresco, all the balconies are open. The restaurants, if you look up around here, are all full also. All that is, except one. This is Custard. It's my favourite restaurant in the whole of Padstow, better even than Rick Stein. They do a fantastic breakfast. They do some great afternoon teas. Their cakes are to die for. But tonight, on a Monday night in August, the peak season, custard is closed. So, I love custard. It's my favourite place in the whole of Padstow. But commercially, they're bonkers. Let me tell you why. Um, a couple of reasons. First of all, it's Monday in August and they're shut. What is going on? It's hard enough for any business right now in the current climate to make a success of things. But if you are a business based in a seaside town in England, why would you close for any day in August? But at Custard they are, they're shut on a Monday and it's completely crackers. But it doesn't stop there. What got them an episode all of their own on MBTV is the second piece of commercial suicide, frankly, that I think they're committing. Because you see, um, yesterday, Sunday, we went for a very long walk, clifftop walk, seven or eight miles, and it culminated here in Padstow. And it was mid-afternoon, about, about four o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, we really were looking for the last mile. What was kept us going and spurred us on was the thought of our um, cup of tea and a nice cake in Custard. They do it very, very well, as I say. So we marched up the steps to the entrance, because Custard is not on the street level, it's, um, it's in the first floor restaurant. We marched up the steps, but we were unable to have our cup of tea and cake. And um, the reason is, at three o'clock, they stopped serving. I said, well, why have you stopped serving? Oh, we need to prepare, they said, for evening meal. Bonkers. Now, I understand why the chef in the kitchen may need to do a bit of preparation for the evening meal, but we wanted a cup of tea and a slice of cake. I just doesn't need a chef. Okay, the waitering staff could take care of that very easily for us. There were six of us. We'd have spent five or six pound each, plus a tip. It was probably 40 pound spend, but they turned us away at four o'clock because they were prepping for their evening meal. Just to be clear, and it's not, it's not that swanky a place. It's commercially naive and completely stupid. And you know, I fully expect at some point soon I'm going to turn up here one of these days in Pasto and Custard is going to be closed. And that'll be really sad um, because it's a great place. They do fantastic food both in the evenings, at lunchtime and especially their breakfasts. But they're marking themselves very poorly anyway because, they're, as I said, they're a first floor restaurant. Um, they haven't got great presence. They should be out there working the quayside, filling the tables. They're never full. They shut. I can't believe it. It's, it's, it makes me want to cry that they're closed for a day in the peak season. And they're giving their front of house staff two hours to serve 15 tables full of silverware and crockery before they open in an evening. And I hope there's nothing as daft as that going on in your business. I hope you're not unwittingly and naively turning away custom in the same way that custard are. So I make no apologies really for kind of making an example of a great British restaurant on this month's NBTV because they should, could be even greater and certainly much more commercially successful. That's all I've got for this week. I'm back with more Cornish stories for NBTV next week. Some more bite-sized bits to help your business grow. I'll see you then.